Hey everyone, I'm Nitij and today I will discuss top 3 areas which I think you should absolutely cover while preparing for any React interview. Now this is based on what I generally ask when I take React interviews. Alright, so let's get started. The first area that you should focus on is the performance. So performance simply relates to everything and every action that you want to take while building your react project and its impact is going to be directly related to how speedy your application is so speedy in terms of how quickly it opens up in the browser and how fast the api calls are how fast the scripts are loaded how fast um, you know code is splitted components are loaded so the first item that you need to cover over here is root based lazy loading and code splitting so this technique boosts application performance by dynamically loading only the components that are required for the active root and not loading all the other root components which are not yet accessed by the user and thereby it reduces the initial load time and decreases the bandwidth usage especially for mobile devices which are running on mobile network the second one is component based lazy loading now component based lazy loading is different from root based lazy loading in the sense that there could be multiple components in a single root so first lazy load the root and then lazy load the components based on when they need to be rendered based on the user interaction so similar to root based but at a granular component level it loads components as they are needed rather than at startup which is particularly beneficial for large components or those with heavy dependencies now images so for images you can discuss optimizing image loading through techniques like compression and responsive images and also lazy loading which can significantly enhance page load times and the overall performance fonts basically involves optimizing font delivery by selecting efficient formats which provide a better compression and also using font loading strategies like font display and minimizing font file sizes which contributes to faster rendering so it simply means your font files should contain only the fonts which your web application is actually going to use for the character sets which it needs you don't have to download the entire 5 mb or 6 mb font file instead just download the subset of the font file which is necessary Next is scripts. So strategies like prefetching resources are applicable for scripts for future navigation and also deferring non-critical script loading until after the initial render to improve the page load time and user experience. Next is the memoization. So memoization in terms of React is specifically related to the use memo and use callback hooks, but it can be extended to JavaScript as well by using normal memoize functions so memoizing simply prevents unnecessary recalculations and re-rendering hence boosting performance especially in components with complex computations so that was all about the performance now the second area which you should absolutely focus on while preparing is the security aspect of your web application so with security first you should cover authentication and authorization they normally involve the login, registration, logout, tokens, JWTs, refresh tokens, etc. For tokens, you can talk about the role of tokens for maintaining user sessions and refresh tokens for prolonged authentication without re-logging in and without compromising security. There is so much other stuff as well, which is simply out of the scope of this video. But I mean, authentication and authorization is the primary item that you should prepare for while preparing for any mid to senior level react interview the second one is the root protection so root protection are simply the techniques to safeguard the react roots ensuring that sensitive content is only accessible to authenticated or authorized users basically the users which are meant to see any root should only see the root otherwise they should not be able to access next is the data validation both on client and the server for React, we should only be concerned about the client side, but then the server side also should come into picture. I mean, the front-end developers should at least keep it in their mind 
to discuss with the backend developers what kind of validations are there in the server side because the client and server validations should normally be in sync. Next one is app security by using Google reCAPTCHA or any other similar products. So use of tools like Google reCAPTCHA to protect against spam and abuse by distinguishing human users from bots. This should be discussed while you are discussing about the security. Next you can talk about API middleware and under this you can cover topics like rate limiting, authentication, logging, monitoring etc. So rate limiting is important to prevent um, DDoS attacks and authentication middleware is important to authenticate the requests coming into the API middleware and logging for monitoring and troubleshooting. Next you can talk about the database security rules. This covers practices like setting permissions, encrypting sensitive data and implementing secure access controls to protect data integrity and privacy and the database security rules also apply both to the client side and the server side. Next is error handling. So effective error handling strategies to manage and catch the exceptions, preventing application crashes and potential security vulnerabilities. In terms of React, you can do that in primarily two ways. The first one is by using a error boundary and second one is by using custom error handling, preferably by using error handling hooks. Now for the third area, there could be some other questions that I think you should always be prepared to answer. The first one is about hooks. So in every React interview, there is a very great possibility that you will be asked questions about hooks, some tricky concepts revolving around them. You can talk about the in-depth look at React hooks like use effect for side effects, use state for state management, and also you can talk about creating custom hooks for reusable logic. Second one is hands-on coding experience. So the interviewer may try to evaluate your practical experience in writing, debugging and maintaining code, focusing on real world problem solving skills. Then you may be asked about situational questions to assess your critical thinking and decision making skills in specific scenarios such as handling project delays or difficult bugs. I mean, I always do that. I simply ask about a hypothetical situation and how the candidate would proceed to navigate that difficult situation to come to a preferable outcome. Next are JavaScript questions. So over here, the interviewer can examine your comprehensive JavaScript knowledge, including ES6 features, asynchronous programming, and you know, the event loop as well, which are foundations for the react development too. Next are stuff like memory management, garbage collection, etc., which simply focuses on understanding of JavaScript's memory management and garbage collection mechanisms and best practices to avoid memory leaks both in JavaScript and in react as well. Next, you can be asked about deployment and CICD basics because most often the front-end developers also need to participate in the deployment process with the DevOps team and it covers knowledge related to software deployment process, continuous integration and deployment practices including tools and strategies used in modern development pipelines, the environment variables, how to maintain them, how to set them, where to set them, etc. Next, there could be questions about common workflow practices like Agile, Jira, Bitbucket, GitHub, whatever tools you are using. Discuss the familiarity with Agile methodology and tools for project management, version control, which are essential for collaborative and iterative software development. Next is the test automation, which you can also talk about by using, for example, Jest, Cypress, etc. This explores expertise in automated testing tools like Jest for unit testing and Cypress for end-to-end -end testing which are crucial for ensuring code reliability and quality. In conclusion, mastering these three areas in React can dramatically improve both your application quality and your performance in interviews. Remember, the key is to understand the concepts deeply and practice them regularly. Before we wrap up, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel if you found this tutorial helpful. Your support motivates me to create more content like this. Stay tuned for more in-depth tutorials and tips on web development. 
I am Nitij and it's been a pleasure guiding you through this React journey. Thank you for watching.